Good morning again. It's so good to be back with you in this place with the beauty of holiness of our God. To those of you that are watching online, I say good morning once again. To the shepherd of this house, Pastor Christine, in her absence, we give God the glory. Amen. Pray with me. You are the God that gives sight to the blind. The God that holds hearts in the palm of your hand. The God who loves us unconditionally. To the God of this universe, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to share with your children, your people. We ask that you would bless this time that we share together Take these lips of clay, mold them, and make them to say what you would have them to say. Take the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts collectively. For you are our rock, our redeemer. You're the lily of the valley. You're the wheel in the middle of a wheel. And we thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. We are told that silence is golden, an idiom that used to say that it's often better to remain silent to, than to speak. And there is some truth to that at times, but there also comes a time in our lives where we must speak up and out against the things that are hindering us, things that are bothering us, things that alienate us from engaging in life fully and causing us to miss out on God's best for our life. This is where we find ourselves today. We find ourselves traveling on the road with Jesus, the disciples, and a large crowd on their way to Jerusalem. Most likely they were going to celebrate the Passover. On their way to Jerusalem, the place where Jesus would give up his life. The place where Jesus had told and foretold the disciples about his impending death and resurrection. Jesus said that the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes and would be condemned to death. Now, church, I want you to know that Jesus was not silent about what would happen in Jerusalem. He was not silent in his preparation talk to the disciples about what was going to happen. Remember, silence is not always golden. For there are times when we need to speak up and speak out. The Samaritan scripture that you heard earlier is one of those times. On this road to Jerusalem, Jesus, the disciples, and the crowd encounter a blind man by the side of the road in Jericho. Not because they stopped to give the beggar something, not because they stopped to ease his burden, and not because they wanted to recognize this man because he was known to them. They did not do like Peter and John, who said, silver and gold have we none, but such as we have, we give to you. No, it was nothing like that, but it was because the blind beggar by the name of Bartimaeus, which in Aramaic means son of Timaeus, heard something special. L let me just stop one minute here. It's all right if you say amen. amen. <laughs> See, I like to hear that because if I don't hear amen every now and then, I might go longer than you want me to. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Remember, he was blind, so he could not see who was passing by, but he could hear. Did he hear the people call out Jesus' name? Did someone whisper in his ear to tell him that the man Jesus was passing by? Did one of the disciples want Jesus to work a miracle? No, 
None of this occurred in this instance. Blind Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, and if you would allow me to use my spiritual imagination, something quickened on the inside of him. And he began to shout out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. In one of the other Gospels, it says that blind Bartimaeus, when he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. So let me take a station identification break right here. Nobody offered this information to the beggar, but the beggar had to open his mouth. He had to stop being silent and say something. You better speak up. For church, as I said, silence is not always golden. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> after Bartimaeus asked the question, after he spoke up, they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. If you want some information, if you want to gain some knowledge, if you want to be recognized, you better speak up. You better ask questions for clarity. Remember that I said that I believe that something quickened on the inside of our mayor's spirit and he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now you might ask me, how do I know that something quickened in Bartimaeus' spirit? Now y'all know I'm glad y'all asked that question. I know this because Bartimaeus did not call Jesus just by his government name, Jesus. But he added the title, Son of David. This is a spiritual answer. It is a spiritual recognition. It is a spiritual calling out to someone of significance. This is what I like to call a faith cry, a faith connection. For you see, faith is the substance of things hoped for. For you see, Barnabas wanted to see. Barnabas wanted something different in his life. Faith, the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. Now, Bartimaeus could not see in the natural, but his spiritual sight was clear. It is like that song that was from a long time ago, I can see clearly now. In the midst of this faith, we are told that many in the crowd sternly ordered him to be quiet. They wanted him to shut up. They wanted him to disappear into the shadows. The crowd did not believe that Barnabas, a blind beggar, was worthy enough to disturb Jesus, to stop Jesus in his tracks, to have mercy on this nobody, as was deemed by the crowd. Keep your voice down was their ad, ad, admonition to Bartimaeus. Stay on the margins of life. Stay on the side of the road where you have been. You are sidelined for a reason. Be quiet. Stay unseen. Stay ignored. Don't you hear that Jesus is busy with those that are already around him? He has no time for a beggar and a blind one at that. Church, let me take another station identification break right here. Barnabas might have been physically blind, but those that were telling him to be quiet were spiritually and mentally blind. For you see, they did not know the significance of the name Barnabas. Remember earlier I said that his name meant son of Timaeus? Well, Timaeus means honored or valued one. Or it means highly prized son. Now the other meaning is in the negative is son of trash. I think we might be onto something right here. You see why the crowd rebuked him for calling out to Jesus, 
the Messiah and asking for mercy because they saw Bartimaeus as trash, as a nobody, as a person of low worth, as an economic disaster because he was blind and a beggar. And they probably thought that he deserved his blindness for people believed that when people were ill, it was a punishment from God. But Jesus, on the other hand, saw Bartimaeus differently. They might have told him to be quiet because he called Jesus son of David. Because he knew of his divine nature. Well, look at it. Nobody else in that crowd are on the sidelines called Jesus son of David. No one else gave Jesus his props recognized who he was, understood the power and the purpose of his passing by. No one called him by his legacy, but Bartimaeus. <laughs> so church, who was really blind in this situation? Think about it. The son of Timaeus was calling out to the son of David. This sounds like kinship to me while everyone else told him to be quiet. Jesus would tell him to come closer because Bartimaeus refused to heed the voices of the crowd to be silent. The Bible says that he even cried out the more, cried out louder. Maybe at the beginning he said, Jesus, son of David. But when that crowd started to hush him, I believe that he said, Jesus! son of David, because he knew that Jesus was the source of mercy. Barnabas took the time to advocate for himself. You see, Barnabas probably heard that Jesus had opened blind eyes before. Let me tell you this, church. We cannot silence our voices when they need to be heard. We cannot let the crowd silence our voice because they think that they have the power to do just that. We cannot be silenced by the crowd. We must speak up and cry out to those that can help us, to those who are waiting to hear our voices. We must be persistent and persuasive. Cry out against the ravages of breast cancer or any disease that keeps you from living your best life. Cry out against domestic violence or abuse. Speak up and out against political and social injustice and economic injustice and the lies that are being told to keep people in a place of hopeless. Hello, somebody. We must not let the crowd, whoever they may be and whatever they might represent, tell us to be quiet. You better take the time and speak up. For we are at a critical point in our lives. So we better speak up by going to the polls and casting our votes. Oh yes, she said it. She said it. Don't let others challenge your right to get what you need. I wonder, have you ever had to go against the grain and cry out for what you wanted or needed? Have you ever spoken up when those around you told you to shut up or be quiet because they did not want to be bothered with you? or they did not think it was worth your time. Well, if you won't answer the question, yes, I'll answer that question. I have had to, okay, <laughs> look people in the face and say, you can't tell me to shut up. You don't know whose child you are talking to. So church, in spite of the negative voices, you need to persist in the face of adversity. For it is said that a squeaky wheel gets the grease. And now if you don't know what it means, it means that the squeaky wheel gets attention. If your wheel is squeaking, what you gonna do? You gonna pull into an auto mechanic shop. Hello, somebody. By not speaking up, 
Barnabas would have been living beneath his privileges. Barnabas would have stayed in the dark. He would have stayed blind with the crowds passing him by on the road and not dropping anything into his bucket. Hello, somebody. Living beneath his privileges, the privilege that says that he had a right to connect with Jesus. His blindness was not a situation that should keep him from connecting with Jesus, the source of what he needed. But in Jesus' response to Bartimaeus, Jesus was cutting through what society deems as a bother. Barnabas was not a bother. He was an opportunity for Jesus to do just what he left glory to do. Hello, somebody. For Jesus did not ignore Barnabas, but he directed for him to be called to come closer. Barnabas' cry and call stopped Jesus dead in his tracks. For Jesus was letting those know that those of you who tried to hush Barnabas and relegate him to the margins know that you have no authority to silence anyone because you're messing in my business. Jesus' business. Jesus' business was healing, using the miraculous to do just that. Now, even though Jesus was moving toward his destiny, he had time to minister to the person that was on the side of the road, a person outside of the societal norm. He had time to serve someone in need. He had time to extend mercy. Whether you know it or not, mercy is a noun in action. Hello? Hello? It's a mission performed to relieve suffering. Lord, have mercy. In the Bible is a prayer that expresses humility and a need for only what God can provide. Have mercy on me. Means to treat someone with kindness and forgiveness. Have mercy on me means that we're looking for some relief. Have mercy on me. Means that I need help and I need it right now. The Bible looks at mercy for those suffering through healing, comfort, the alleviation of this suffering and caring about those in distress. Church mercy is the feud of cam compassion. United Church of Hyde Park, isn't it good to know that God's mercies are new every morning? Oh, you better speak up. For you see, I believe that when Jesus heard the vocalness of Barnabas, compassion tugged on his heart, which caused Jesus to ask that question. What do you want me to do for you? How many of you wish Jesus would ask you that question right now? What do you want me to do for you? And Mark tells us that Barnabas said to him, Rabbi, or my teacher, let me see again. Now this statement comes from the heart of faith. This statement also tells us that Barnabas was not born blind. Hello, somebody. For he said, let me see again. For Barnabas believed that just in asking Jesus, that Jesus would respond favorably. And church, don't you know? Favorably is what Jesus did. For he said, go your faith has made you well. He didn't say, open your eyes. He didn't say, come let me touch you. What he said was, your faith has made you well. In other words, the connection with me has made you well. The faith that you displayed 
made you well. And immediately Barnabas had sight and followed Jesus. Isn't it funny that Barnabas didn't turn around and go back into the shadows? That he didn't go back into the margins? That he didn't go back and sit on the side of the road? But Barnabas got up, looked, and followed Jesus. Oh, y'all don't hear me this morning. <laughs> But as I conclude this message and take my seat this morning, I need to take another station identification break. Notice that Jesus did not tell Barnabas to be silent, tell him not to tell anyone about this healing, not to tell anyone that I did it, not to tell anyone that you can see. <laughs> For Jesus didn't need Nobody to be silent because he was on his way to the cross and he wanted us all to know <laughs> what he was about to do. Barnabas, I believe that even if Barnabas, that Jesus had told Barnabas to be silent, <laughs> that he wouldn't. It was like fire shut up in his bone. Barnabas had to speak up. So that's why he followed Jesus. I wonder who's following Jesus today. I wonder who wants mercy from Jesus today. I wonder, United Church of Hyde Park, are you ready to speak up? <laughs> Time not to be silent. You might be looking at me, but you're going to remember me. <laughs> Hello, somebody. God in heaven, we ask that you would bless your people. Open our eyes that we might see. Open our hearts that we might feel. Open our spirits that we might connect with you. Bless your people, oh God. Bring them into that connection with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.